So I'm just back from my four day bikepacking trip in the Himalayas and a lot of you have been asking me as to what gear do I carry. Uh, if you've seen photographs of the trip you would realize that I'm only carrying two bags here, the handlebar bag and the saddle bag. So my handlebar bag is an Ortlieb Classic waterproof bag and I've had this bag for about eight years now. It's extremely robust and waterproof and the things that I carry in this bag are things that I need to be able to access through the ride. So let's dig deep into what I'm carrying. I tend to pack my electronics in the handlebar bags because these are things that I would need uh, during the ride and the first thing when I get off the bike. So my trusty GoPro, a pair of wired headphones, these are MI dual driver headphones and I tend to use uh, wired headphones because that's just one less thing to charge. Then I have my trusty notebook and a pen. So everything that I need to write down, I write it down with using a pen and paper. Uh, while I could be doing it on my mobile phone as well, but it tends to save me a lot of battery. And secondly, I can give out numbers to uh, people, uh, just, just tear a paper off, uh, write something on it and give it out to other people as well. This is a small plastic box with Enazal in it, uh, Enazal or ORS, but this is for instant energy or to mix with my water. Then I have the legs of my zip-off uh, cycling uh, trousers. So whenever I reach a destination, I simply reattach these legs uh, back to my cycling pants. And, and my non-fashion savvy zip-off pants. I wear them as shorts during the day when I'm riding my bike. And then when I'm not riding, I just I just zip on the lower attachments and lo and behold, and I have a full pair of pants. So this being the monsoon season, I was carrying a uh, decathlon poncho with me. So if I was caught in a rainstorm with no shelter around, I could simply put the poncho over my head and stand next to the road without getting wet. So that was the idea behind this. I would not be carrying it if it was not the monsoon season. But for this trip, uh, it was there in my handlebar bag all along. Of course, this being the uh, corona season, a mask, extremely mandatory. Then I have a bottle of TF2 dry wax in my handlebar bag as well. One, despite the bad weather, I choose to use uh, dry wax because it keeps my dry frame much cleaner. Yes, I had to reapply it sometimes even multiple times a day, but the trade-off uh, between having a clean dry frame vis -vis was worth it in my opinion. Then I have a small microfiber cloth by Vanguard. I use it to clean my phone, my camera and other electronic items. A buff, again, quite essential when you're out on the uh, windy uh, passes because it helps uh, keeps the wind off your face. There are multiple ways to use it. Mostly I just put it around my neck to save me from sunburn when it's hot and I put it around my face when it gets really dusty. My wallet with a few cards, identification and cash. Uh, this is not my regular wallet. I tend to use a cloth wallet because it's much lighter than my regular uh, leather wallet. And it's a small subset of things that I need for the tour. I don't need to carry all my bank cards. I don't need to carry all my identification, just a couple of identification papers, one bank card and cash. That's it. Uh, the only medicine that I usually carry is Comiflam because it helps with the fever and with muscular pains as well. A Phoenix uh, torch and a Leatherman folding knife. Uh, this is my EDC or everyday carry. This goes with me on every trip, whether it's hiking or bikepacking or any other adventure. The good thing about this Phoenix torch is it takes AA batteries. AA batteries are quite easy to get and I'm already carrying a couple of extra Enelope batteries uh, for my GPS anyway. So I can use these rechargeable batteries in my torch as well. And finally, I simply divide the number of days that I'm traveling and I uh, carry about eight squares of uh, toilet paper for each day that I'm traveling uh, on the bicycle. So that's about it. That's all I'm carrying in my handlebar bag. This is the key to lock the handlebar bag to my bicycle. Yeah, I mean, these, 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 these are are the uh, things that I need on a day-to-day -day basis. So moving on to the saddlebag, there are two things that you'll always find uh, strapped to my saddlebag. One of them is the Knight Rider Cherry Bomb 100 uh, tail light. It runs on AAA batteries, it's completely waterproof and it has the longest running battery life of any light that I know. And because it runs on AAA batteries, when the batteries do finish, I can simply just add in new batteries. And it's daylight visible as well, so that's a big plus because I always ride with the daylight running on during the day. The other thing that I have on here is my cycling jacket. First and the most important thing is my cycling jacket. This is a Nike Stormproof cycling specific jacket. And because it's a cycling jacket, it has this uh, pocket in the back. It has these small nice touches like the arms are completely removable and 
It has two huge uh, pockets up front. I have uh, my iPod shop always in my jacket. So whenever I'm feeling a bit tired, I can just turn on a little bit of music. So moving on to the saddlebag. The gear in this bag is usually gear that I don't need during the ride. This is camping gear. These are extra clothes. Uh, these are bicycle spares that are only needed if I stop. This saddlebag is a giant uh, saddlebag that I bought off the internet a few years ago. It was on sale at that time and it was just lying with me. I had not used it much because I already have Otlieb uh, back roller panniers. For uh, trips in the Himalayas where you'll be riding over rough ground, I have realized that uh, one needs to keep the setup very light and a bikepacking like setup without a rack, without rear panniers, keeps the uh, balance of the bike uh, just where you want it on such bad roads. Again, this bag performed quite well. It did get a few scruffs where it rubbed against my tires, but that is entirely my fault because I lit it up to loose. So let's see what's in this bag over here. So again, like I mentioned, this being the monsoon season, everything is compartmentalized and it's packed in individual uh, plastic bags just to keep it dry in case there's a heavy rain. Though the bag is waterproof, but I don't want to take a chance with uh, my sleeping gear or my extra clothes and or getting them wet uh, during a tour. This second plastic bag is bicycle spares. Then I have my travel towel, quite essential for a bikepacking tour because it gives me the flexibility to take a bath in any mountain stream or just wipe myself off after a hard day of cycling. So on to the camping gear. This is a 100% silk sleeping bag liner. So a sleeping bag liner goes inside your sleeping bag. One, it keeps the sleeping bag clean and I can simply come home and wash the sleeping bag liner instead of having uh, to wash the sleeping bag uh, time and time again, reducing its life. Then I have my sleeping bag, again packed in a plastic bag. This is a mountain equipment helium sleeping bag that is rated to about 2 degrees. This is my summer sleeping bag. When I add the silk liner to it, I would say my comfort rating would go down to about uh, 0 degrees, which is about sufficient for most summer camping trips. This is a down sleeping bag, so it packs down quite compact. I prefer using a down sleeping bag instead of a synthetic sleeping bag because they're lighter. And I generally find them more comfortable and warm as compared to uh, synthetic sleeping bags. And finally, I have my Arabi Alpine uh, Bivi uh, sack. I do not carry a tent on a bikepacking tour because with the poles, with the shock cords, there are a lot of things to break. And that has happened to me a couple of times where I've had uh, my tent poles uh, bent or broke because of the rigors of bikepacking. So a Bivi has no moving part. Yes, it's not as comfortable as a tent, but it does provide you with a reasonable amount of shelter. And I have a mountaineering background. So for me, a Bivi works perfectly. So the spare clothes that I was carrying on this trip was a decathlon fleece. I hardly ended up using it because the weather was mostly good. There was just one evening that I wore it and fleece is usually has a good uh, weight is to uh, warmth ratio. Another good thing about a fleece is because it's synthetic so even if you do get it wet it dries off pretty quickly. So the model that I chose it comes with no pocket and a short zipper and the reason behind that was uh, to keep the weight down again. The full zippered uh, model was at least 150 grams uh, heavier than this fleece for the same amount of warmth. Cut down weight wherever you can because uh, the small bits do add up. The second piece of clothing is an extra cycling uh, jersey, an old gore bike wear jersey that I've owned, I think, again, for seven or eight years. Same criteria, it's synthetic, it's extremely lightweight, and I can change the main full sleeve jersey that I wear on a bike packing tour with this. The third piece of clothing was an extra pair of shorts just in case my main pants give away or if it rains uh, I can just replace them with this pair of shorts. This contains all the bicycle spares that I was carrying for this trip. The most used uh, piece of gear is a set of rags. I always carry a spare set of rags. I clean my bike obsessively even during tours. Just because you're on tour doesn't mean you ignore your bike maintenance. In fact, it becomes far more important because you're riding a loaded bike which is heavier and it puts more strain on every component, the drive train, the brakes. So keep them clean and they'll serve you well. So this is essential for me. I usually carry them in different colors as well. This is used to clean the frame. This is used to clean the drive frame and so on. Then I have uh, two spare inner tube. These are uh, Schwalbe inner tube. It's a bit heavier as compared to other uh, inner tube, but I've always found Schwalbe to be more reliable than uh, let's say Continental or Panaracer inner tube. I didn't have to use any of them in this tour and I was seriously debating whether I should carry just one inner tube or two inner tube, but the terrain that I 
was on was extremely rugged and I finally decided extra 350 odd grams of uh, one tube would give me a greater uh, satisfaction in case of a mechanical. My trusty Decathlon tire levers are made out of plastic. What I really like about these tire levers is that they're quite wide. So they give you a good purchase and they don't break off that easily. And they can be used to push back uh, brake pistons if needed. They're quite flexible as well. And then my handy multi-tool that comes with the chain breaker as well. Chain breaker, spoke wrenches, round circular wrenches, allen keys and screwdriver bit. Tire patches and tire sealant in case I need to remove more than uh, two punctures. In, in case I have a puncture I simply replace the inner tube with the new tube and keep the old inner tube uh, in my bag. When I've reached where I want to reach I repair the inner tube uh, that has been punctured. A small piece of plastic that I can stick inside disc brake uh, pads in case I have to take off the tire. So this has happened to me before. Uh, I was really tired on a trip and uh, I had taken off the tire and I accidentally pumped the brakes which caused the brake pads to stick to each other and it took me a long time to pry them apart using my tire lever. So now I carry this small piece of plastic it doesn't weigh more than 10-15 grams but whenever I take off the tire uh, on my bike I simply stick this between the disc pads so at least even if I accidentally press the brakes uh, they don't stick to each other. So a small thing but uh, quite useful. Then I have a couple of uh, business cards. This can be used to mesh brake pad uh, wear. I'll leave a link uh, to that video in the description below. But in an emergency, this can also be used as a tire boot. You can simply slide it between the inner tube and the tire to give you some temporary protection against a big gash on the tire. Some spare cash. I mean, it's not much, but in case you lose everything, there is some cash with you. Call out for help or to get to a place. This is about 500 rupees and 100 rupee notes. And finally, as an afterthought, I had packed a pair of extra disc brake pads. I ended up not using them and probably I shouldn't have carried them because I just replaced the disc pads on my bike. But I had a feeling that I would be going downhill on really steep sections. And uh, it just occurred to me on the morning before the tour that maybe I should have a pair of extra brake pads uh, with me. Again, uh, this was more, more of an afterthought and I'm not really proud of that decision. But uh, yeah, I did end up carrying it through my tour. Now, you might think that this is a very small set of uh, gear that I'm carrying. I'm not carrying any extra spokes, I'm not carrying any extra cables or, or things like that. And the reason for that is that my bike is immaculately maintained. Before any tour, etc., I take out a lot of time just to go over every nook and cranny of my bike to figure out whether it's in perfect running condition or not. Uh, and because of the confidence that the maintenance gives me, I'm able to carry much less on a tour. So this was it. So on my bike, uh, you will always find two water bottles, a topi pump, and then there's the Garmin E-Trix uh, GPS uh, that is always strapped to my handlebars. So that's about it. This is everything that I carried on my bike for this bike packing tour. It was an extremely lightweight setup uh, because I knew I wanted to get in and get out as quickly as possible with the monsoons coming in and it worked quite well for me. In the next section, I'll discuss what went well and what didn't go well with this setup. So the first thing that worked really well on this tour are these Panaracer Gravel King AC tires. These are 33C tires and I wish I had the wider 38C version. But throughout this trip there was never a place where my tires slipped or I had a lack of grip. And the terrain that I was going through was not really conducive to these narrow tires. I mean we went over everything. We went over mud, we went over slippery wet rocks, we went through uh, gravel, dry and wet as well. But uh, Throughout this trip, I mean, I, I was frankly amazed at the fact that even when I was putting down a lot of power, uh, the rear tire grip absolutely refused to give in. There is a fair bit of compromise uh, because the Gravel King ACs have uh, quite a bit of aggressive knobs on them. They're not that uh, well suited for good tarmac riding. But again, uh, like I mentioned in my review uh, before, if your conditions are unpredictable and you don't know whether your tarmac is going to turn into a muddy river uh, the next day, then uh, these tires are simply the bomb. They really work and they work quite well. So the second thing that worked really well on this tour was my uh, Samsung budget M30S phone and the reason for that is that it comes with a really huge battery, a 6000 mAh battery and also the fact that it has this nifty feature wherein I can simply turn on the power saving mode and when I do that it restricts the number of apps uh, that can run so it basically runs like dump like those old Nokia phones that you had and once you do that uh, the battery life goes through the roof. So right now the battery is at 31% and it will give me a day and 16 hours uh, of battery life. 
on a fully charged phone it gives me around four days easily out of the box so that's something that worked really well on this trip uh, because of that i did not have to carry an additional power bank or cables or anything like that i was carrying my uh, charger uh, but i did not need to use it uh, throughout this trip the third thing that was really great that worked really well is this garmin e-trex 20x gps that i have it's a gps that is powered by two AA batteries and i used rechargeable batteries here and after having used it for uh, three days uh, you can see that i still have half the battery left so that is how long it goes if i keep the backlight to an absolutely minimum and i don't use the mapping feature that often but when you're on a bike packing trip you really don't need the mapping feature because uh, mapping is generally needed when you're in going through towns or villages and you need to figure out which road is which on a remote area there is generally only one trail or one road uh, that is there so you really don't need to uh, validate uh, your route very often maybe once a couple of hours just to see if you're on the right track but that's about it so again uh, garmin e-trex 20x waterproof powered by AA batteries a huge battery life and uh, it's it's relatively lightweight it's not a fancy gps it uses the knob uh, it doesn't have a touch screen it uses the knob to move through the menus but it plain simply works if you're looking for something robust with a long battery life then this is the gps to get if you're looking for something that has more features then go for a bike computer like wahoo is my cherry bomb night rider 100 i did a review of this light i'll leave a link to that this is also a light that is powered by AAA batteries and i can simply count on it to last me for four or five days of bike pack i've never had uh, water getting into the light or in any problems with this or its predecessor the cherry bomb uh, 35 that i used own for about four or five years as well now Another cheap uh, but essential piece of gear is this 300 rupee uh, sunglasses that I got from Decathlon. The purpose behind these is not uh, as much to keep out the sun but to keep out the bug when you're going downhill or you're riding really fast. Especially if you're going for a long tour uh, and you don't want to take your Oakleys or um, really expensive sunglasses. The thing that disappointed me the most on this trip was my GoPro. Unfortunately, I packed the GoPro along because it uses the same USB-C charging as my phone. So it was just one cable uh, that I needed to use. But I had a weird problem with it. I charged it on the night before that I was supposed to leave. And uh, the next day when I took it out of the bag to make some videos, uh, it had completely run out of battery. Then I charged it again overnight in Bhadrawa. And the next day at uh, Chhatrakala Pass, again out of battery, which was weird. So uh, at that time, I did a factory reset of it. And I charged it in Sarthal. I had access to a solar charger for an hour. I managed to get it up to 50%. And after that, it worked after doing the factory reset. It leaves a sour taste in your mouth because I was counting on the GoPro to do videos. I was counting on my mobile to do still photography. But I just couldn't get any footage out of the GoPro because of it just kept running out of battery for some reason. Till I did a factory reset and then it was okay. This is supposed to be an action camera. It's supposed to be tough and the battery is supposed to last. So I don't understand uh, why that happened. Maybe I'll explore this a little bit more. Uh, uh, but uh, on this trip, uh, the GoPro was really out of action. The other thing that worked great on this uh, tour, again, is the dry frame. A lot of people believe that uh, in order to be able to bike pack, you need the latest and greatest that Shimano has to offer, like the GRX or a gravel specific uh, dry frame, and it's only then that you can go out to uh, bike pack. That is not the case. What you really need is a well maintained dry frame. You need a lot of low gears. Uh, so, a 3x9 uh, dry frame like the one that I have on this bike gives me plenty of low gears to go up through tough climbs. Yes, uh, better components are better for a reason. That that doesn't mean that you need to restrict yourself and say you I can't tour till the time I don't have X Y or Z uh, quality components. I've always maintained that the best bike for touring is the bike that you already own and have maintained properly. If it is extremely well maintained, you, you're gonna have a lot of fun on the tour. It's no fun to have uh, different things on your bike break off just because of lack of maintenance on a tour. And again, hydraulic disc brakes. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, don't take hydraulic disc brakes uh, on a tour because if they fail, they fail catastrophically. And I tend to agree with that because if uh, the hydraulic fluid does leak in your braking system, your, your tour is done. But again, this is where preventive maintenance comes into play. This is not something that will happen until unless you have an accident or you've not maintained your brakes properly. On well-maintained brakes, 
the amount of modulation and the amount of control that hydraulic uh, disc brakes gives you is immense and i think it's a very positive thing to have small touring touch is flat pedals all the way i don't think i will ever ride with clipless uh, pedal uh, unless I'm, I'm really doing a good tarmac only tour on, on bad road it saves you weight because you are not carrying a cycling specific shoe and then a walking shoe with it there's only one pair of shoes that you need to wear and versatility is the key over there and these shimano uh, pedals uh, that i reviewed recently the review card should be coming up on top these perform uh, admirably you can see paint has eroded from these nubs but uh, other than that the performance has been uh, quite good so one thing that i really miss on the bergamon sweep is the ability to add a water bottle on the down tube over here in past i've had bicycles where i was able to do that all these spares that i was carrying on a tour would go in a water bottle uh, because spares are heavy it makes sense to keep the masks uh, close to the ground as possible and this is a great place to have it because it also acts like a small mud guard it takes the front of all the crud that is thrown up by the front tire also the fact that uh, you don't need to carry heavy spares in your saddle back which adds a lot of wag to the saddle back so that is something that i really missed on this tour the ability to add a water bottle or a tool bottle onto my down tube it's very easy to get embroiled in all the gear that goes along with bike packing but, but i think the most important thing to remember is that it is the journey that counts and for me on this trip i think i made some memorable memories something that is going to stay with me for a long time to come so this was me just talking about my bike pack gear and uh, the trip that I made recently. Do let me know if this format of videos works for you, whether you like hearing about bikepacking gear or, or perhaps you want more about the journey itself. This is Bharat from Gear Lama signing off. Don't forget to ride your bike and have a good one.